So, if you've been successful with the Green Belt song, this is the Purple Belt song, your next step. Uh, first, I would like to encourage you to uh, revisit any of the videos that I have regarding using the bow, um, preparing it, rosining it, etc. Uh, you're going to be using the bow from this point forward, and you want to develop those good habits, which means paying constant attention. Um, earning a belt in this Karate Strings program is not simply about getting through the notes. We want to develop skills that will be ongoing. And also we want to make those skills what we call second nature, uh, which means that we, we do them so much that we don't have to think about them uh, later on. However, in, in the learning stage, it does mean that you have to think about them quite a lot because they may not be things that you do regularly. Like, for example, the bow hold is not something that, it's not a way that you would normally hold an object. So you want to really pay attention to, to have you, how you have your fingers on, on the bow, whether it's for, for cello, you know, sort of holding it in between your fingers like, like so, or for violin and viola, where you have it kind of tilted a little bit with the pinky up and, and your thumb again on the back. Um, so the Skyboat song, it uses both the D and the A string, and it, you, on those strings it uses both the open string the first finger, which is the red tape, and the blue tape, which for violin and viola is third finger, and for cello is fourth finger. Okay, so it's using the same the same fingers on both strings. Now, by doing that, it creates different notes because each string is going to make a, a, a different sound, and um, and so that's sort of our, our choice of of notes that we have in this. Now, one thing that I find helpful with this particular, it, it could be a very challenging song. Um, and uh, something I find helpful is to really kind of understand where it comes from in this sense. And not for out of trivia, uh, there's actually a direct tie-in with the music. Um, Skye is an island off of Scotland, and this is a very uh, famous old Scottish song, folk song. And one thing, if, if you ever get the chance to see pictures of the island of Skye, it's very mountainous, very, very, like, steep mountains, very, and not flat at all. Now that's important because the actual, the contour, in other words, the shape of the notes tend to get higher and lower, higher and lower, just like mountains do. So you can kind of picture that as you are, as you're learning the song, right? We're going to start on the D string, lower notes, and work our way up to uh, onto the A string and then work our way back down and then do it again. So you can kind of think of it as being a song about two mountains. Um, and there are some patterns within it that you will probably learn along the way. Uh, one other thing you will notice in the book is you have notes that are not completely filled in. So they'll have the color like a ring around the outside, but they're not completely filled in. These are notes that are two beats long. They're longer. Uh, so you use more bow twice as much bow uh, for, uh, for the same amount of work, okay? So um, it has two halves to it, and each half has two parts uh, within it also. So you can think of it as having four lines, line one, two, three, and four, and if you take a quick look through the book, you'll see line one and three are identical, okay? So going up the mountain both times is exactly the same thing. When you come down the mountain, lines two and four, uh, it's only different by one note, okay? So we like to look for these things to see where there are similarities because this saves us a, a lot of figuring out, right? We can just remember how they're slightly different rather than try to think of, oh, it's four completely different lines, okay? So the first line, again, I'm going to show this on violin, but if, if you're looking at the colors, and I, I recommend as I play this, look in your book so you can see the rise and the fall of, of the notes, I'll play it first without any singing or anything like that.
Now, uh, again, we kind of hear how notes are coming up, coming down, going up, coming down, in the, in the overall shape of the melody. So here is the, the first line, and I'm going to uh, sing out the colors that I'm playing. Now, if, I, if I'm playing a note that, that's black, um, this is an open string note. So I'm actually going to sing the letter name of that string. I won't sing the letter names of anything that's red or blue, because uh, I don't want to confuse you with thinking that those might be different strings. They're still on a given string. Okay, so the first line, the first part of it is a D string. So D, red, D, blue, and then there's one more blue. Then you go to the A string. A, red, A, blue. And that doesn't have an extra blue at the top. So now we're at the top of the mountain. So we're going to come down to the red, still on the A string. Red, A, red. And the next one is red, but you have to hop it down onto the D string. Red, red, D, another D. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did in the first line. D, red, D, another blue, here. A, red, A, blue. Now we drop down to the red, because we're going to come back down the mountain. Red, A, Hop down to the D, red. Red, D. And this one comes back up to the blue. Okay? So again, that, that last note is the only difference between the second and the fourth line. First and third line, absolutely the same. Okay? So when you practice this, try to learn it in, in sections like that. I mean, you might... You might think of, of the things that are in the D string first, followed by things on the A string, within the first line, let's say, and then connect those. Think trying to learn that line um, as one gradual. It's not completely going straight up. There's a little tiny hill. D, red, D, blue, blue, A, red, A, blue, red. It's not, mountains aren't completely triangular. right? There's little tiny hills and things like that, and that's the case of, of this song as well. Okay, um, I'm going to play it one more time. And uh, just try to, try, again, try to follow along in the contour of it. Contour means shape, right? So just like mountains have a shape, music has a shape, right? When notes go up, you know, they get higher, and, and we, we see them higher uh, in the music. We, we hear higher sounds uh, when we're looking at, or when we're learning, uh, I should say, the, the letters involved. The letters get higher. They go forward in the alphabet, too. Now, we're not really focusing a lot on letters. Uh, we're mostly concerned about where we are, uh, what string we're on. But at the same time, it's nice to kind of know that all of these things are gonna, going to line up. So here's one more time, the, the entire song. Here's the first line. Second line. Pop it down. Third line, same as the first. Fourth line, almost the same as the second. Pop it down. Except we go back up to the blue. Okay? So the one last thing I want to just quickly show you. When I say hop it down, this is, again, this is a violin, so here's my A string, first finger. There's the, we call that note B. When it hops down, it just goes straight over from one... Uh, if I had a red tape, it, it would be as if it's following the tape over. So red, A, red, E, or for the blue, red, red, A, red, red. Both red, but different sound because it's on a different string. So you just kind of roll it over there, or slide it over, okay? I say hop because sometimes it makes that a little bit more... Uh, precise. So I hope that helps. Uh, if not, then just send me an email, uh, skeletonj at norwalkps.org, and I will try to help you with whatever problems you might have. All right? Thank you.